In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at all of my iPhones, iPod Touches, and iPods, and we're going to take a look at every single one of these functional ones, as well as the ones that are basically only good for parts. If you think this is a lot, then just stay tuned because we've got a lot more to see. Before we begin, if you're wondering why iPads, Apple boxes, or accessories won't be featured, that's because I've got a lot of those as well, and every single one of these devices deserve a good amount of screen time because they're all interesting in their own way. And well, if you try to cram everything into one video, then it starts to get pretty redundant at that point. So to keep things interesting, and I imagine this video will be pretty long as well, we're going to split it up into several dedicated videos. I'm not exactly sure when those will be released or published, but I'll definitely have a playlist of some kind where all of these collection videos are grouped together. And if you want to see the next ones that come out or have been released, then check out that playlist because, well, we've got a lot of cool things to look at today, and these are just the functions ones. I've also got a whole bunch that are not exactly in the greatest of shape. I mean, they're still iPhones and iOS devices, and they still deserve to be looked at as well. We gotta start somewhere, so let's begin with these. Let's go ahead and make some room, so let's get rid of all of these other devices and start with the first one. In fact, before we look at that one, we should probably look at this one, because this is also an iPhone, and as you can see, we're using iPhone technology to uh, look at different iPhones. This is my iPhone 10. Now, this is basically kind of like a work phone because I record all of my YouTube videos with this, with the exception of this clip. It's actually being recorded with an iPhone 6S because obviously you can't film the same thing. But this is what I've been using to record YouTube videos ever since I got this a couple of years ago. And it's kind of crazy to think that this is a five plus year old device because this came out in 2017, but it is still a really fast and responsive device. It has the best camera out of all of my devices. It's just been rock solid this entire time. And even though this is not my main device, it works well as a work device for the channel. It's still on iOS 13. I have not updated this once. I thought about doing it when I initially got it, but I just never got around to it. And at this point, I'm not going to update at all. This is only a 64 gigabyte model, but that is actually more than enough storage to film one, if not several videos for the channel. I do have a case on this and I actually do keep a case on many of my devices that I use more regularly. The other reason why I have a case on this is that you'd never be able to guess unless you actually saw it, but this actually has a crack on the back. And although the damage isn't that major it hasn't affected it at all and the rest of the back glass is still in amazing condition and the same goes for the stainless steel band that is basically in brand new condition and that's basically all there is to see about the 10 so let's go ahead and swap cameras again return to using this and finally take a look at that a first generation iPhone. And this is actually just called iPhone because there was nothing before it. This was the first official iPhone. Now, if you want to get technical, there was that thing in 2005. This is the actual iPhone. And even though I said I'm not going to talk about accessories in today's video, I'm going to make an exception for the 2G because the 2G actually came with a lot of things in the box, if you haven't already noticed. If you look real close, that actually says iPhone. iPhone 2G models actually came with this microfiber cloth. I'm sure at this point, these are probably just as hard to find as an original iPhone. But fortunately, I have one here in the collection. Another thing that actually came in the box, the official dock. But the idea here is, well, you just have your iPhone, place it down in the dock, and you do that whenever you need to charge or sync. And then whenever you're done, you just detach and you're ready to go. Even though at first it seems like there's some damage to the display, this one actually has a screen protector. There's hardly any scratches or scuffs, and apart from some minor wear and tear along this edge here and on the bottom plastic piece here, this is basically almost brand new. This is also an eight gigabyte model. The volume control here is not cracked. None of the plastic pieces are broken. This one fortunately does still hold a charge. 
we have that classic slide to unlock noise. And this one is on version 3.0.1. And this was at the point where it was still called iPhone OS, not iOS. And of course, there's our eight gigabytes of storage. The only thing that is unfortunate about my model is that there seems to be some green dots on the screen. I'm not exactly sure why it's on the screen or what's causing it, but at least it doesn't have any dead pixels on the display. It's telling us right now, low battery, so. Of course, we can just put it on our dock and charge up for whenever we need to use it. And that's pretty much all there is to say about the 2G. I'm glad to have this one, and although I don't use it too much, it's still a very cool piece in the collection. I actually don't have any iPhone 3Gs, which is kind of weird considering I have a first generation. However, here are my two 3GSs that are in better condition. Like with many of the other models that I have, I also have some that are for parts or they don't work properly. And this one kind of doesn't work as a normal iPhone should. I'll explain that in a second. The 16 gigabyte one does have scratches on the back, but fortunately the plastics are not cracked and it is still in relatively good condition. However, once you see the condition of this one, it basically looks like it's brand new. And believe it or not, this is actually my first iPhone ever. This is the first Apple device I had. It still does kind of work. The battery in this actually expanded a couple years ago and I've tried to fix it, I guess because of the damage done. The charging circuitry seems to have some sort of problem because this doesn't detect USB devices and I have tried replacing the dock connector that did not fix it, so it seems to be a logic board issue. However, this does still work. If I leave it plugged in, it will charge after a very long period of time. And although it's not ideal, it does still technically work. And the reason why I'm not featuring this in the parts pile is because, well, this is the first ever phone I had. And in general, just because of the condition that it's in, it still has a mirror-like finish. This one is on iOS 6.1.6, .6, and I believe this one was on iOS 6.1.3. This one, of course, like I said, is a 16 gigabyte model. This one is an eight gigabyte model. This one actually has saved SHSH blobs from iOS 4.1 to 4.3.5. Next up, we've got the iPhone 4s. We've got iOS 4, iOS 5, and iOS 7, and then all of these are also on iOS 7. iOS 4, iOS 5, iOS 7, and then two of these are on iOS 7.0, and one of them is actually on 7.1.2. So here is the iOS 4, iPhone 4. This is model 1332. This one does have some minor damage on the back and the front is in all right condition. The main problem with this iPhone is the home button could do with a replacement. You have to press really hard for it to actually click. It does work, but again, not really ideal. This is on iOS 4.3.5 and it's a 16 gigabyte model. The next one here is an iOS 5 iPhone 4, and I'm not exactly sure why it's at this screen. It's probably due to the fact that it's the first time it's been powered on in a while. This one is on iOS 5.1, and it's an eight gigabyte model. And this is actually the same phone that I used for a week back in 2020 as my daily driver, or at least the one with the SIM card. And although I can't use it now, I'm glad that I actually was able to use it while I still had the ability, at least with the carrier that I have. This one here is actually a CDMA iPhone in which that it doesn't have a SIM card tray, 1349 instead of 1332. This one is on iOS 7.1.2, and this one is also jailbroken because, well, it looks a little bit more modern than something you'd expect from an iPhone 4. Here's another example of a jailbreak tweak, but if we go into settings here, this is just an eight gigabyte model and it's on iOS 7.1.2. Next up, we have three white iPhones that are all on iOS 7. This one is jailbroken. Two of these are the normal 1332 models and the third one here is a CDMA iPhone, which it has no SIM card tray. The CDMA iPhone is actually a 16 gigabyte model and it's actually on iOS 7.0. So if I were to try and turn it off, 
You have that classic early iOS 7 slide to power off slider. The next one here is also the same thing, except that this is an eight gigabyte model. It's on iOS 7.0. However, this one is not jailbroken. This is on stock iOS. And then the last one here, very similar to this one, but this one is not jailbroken and this one is only an eight gigabyte model. However, the nice part about this one is that it's in exceptionally good condition, and this one is by far one of the better iPhone 4s here. The other two are in all right condition. This one is fairly scratched up, and this one is in better condition as well. It doesn't really have any scratches. Next up, we've got iPhone 4s. Of course, I know that this is in uh, not an ideal case. However, this case is actively falling apart. So if I were to remove this, yeah, not exactly ideal. And if I remove this case from this iPhone, it's gonna be in a million pieces. But the iPhone here is in very good condition. This is a 4S and Interestingly enough, this one is also on iOS 7.0. This is probably the best of the best in terms of 7.0 devices. The next one here, this is actually my second device. Going from the 3GS, I went to an iPhone 4S. This iPhone 4S has been used for a very long time. It's on iOS 8.1.2. I have not jailbroken it. The one thing that I really didn't like, especially using this later on, is the limited storage because you can either have applications or storage for photos and you can't really have both when you're limited to eight gigabytes. And this was really the last dedicated iPhone I had before I started getting into iPhones. I still really like this device. Limited amount of storage really held this device back in terms of what it can do. Fortunately though, it's not on iOS 9. Oh, and the reason why this one is still in its case is because this actually has a screen protector that protects all sides of the phone, including the stainless steel parts, and it's not exactly the easiest thing to remove. It does have a screen protector right now. The screen protector itself looks basically brand new. And I might as well mention, for this particular 4S as well as my 3GS, I do have their original boxes. Next up, we've got the iPhone 5 and the 5Cs. I'm combining these because they are basically identical devices. Now you might be wondering, why is this one even here? Shouldn't this one be in the parts pile? Well, actually, this one would benefit from pieces in the parts pile because this one actually does work. Now, even though the display has seen better days and the housing is less than ideal, it still works. It has no iCloud, the battery still holds a charge, and really the only issue with it, it just isn't that great cosmetically. But really the only major problem it has is that the power button doesn't really work. Now, it used to work, and then it started acting as if it was always being pressed down, and now it just doesn't work at all. This particular one is a 16 gigabyte model on iOS 10.3.4. The next iPhone here is another iPhone 5, and both of these are in Slate as well as the third one. And although I do have silver iPhone 5s, those are for parts due to iCloud, but this one is functional, it's jailbroken, and if we take a look at settings, it's again another 16 gigabyte model on iOS 10.3.4, so identical to the previous one, except for the fact that this is in very good cosmetic condition, the power button is functional, I have put a screen protector on this. Apart from some minor wear and tear on the chamfered edges, this is in really good cosmetic condition. So if the previous two iPhone 5s were just iOS 10 and 16 gigabytes, what's so fancy about this one? Well, this one is in basically brand new condition. The chamfered mirror edges have no chips or dings in them. The glass on the back is in basically brand new condition. The slate color is very nice on these older devices. However, it's just a shame of how easily it gets damaged. Now, this one is also on iOS 10. Fortunately, this is a 64 gigabyte model, which is really awesome to see considering that you can do a lot with 64 gigabytes even nowadays. And if you really wanted to, you could always downgrade this as well. So you get even more performance. Now the iPhone 5 performs really well on iOS 10, but you've got a lot of options available and you've got even more options with even more storage. What's also nice about this one is that the display is also in basically brand new condition. However, the main problem with this one is that because it's in such good condition, I don't wanna risk damaging it 
by using it too much. Next up, we've got the five C's. Now I have two blue models here and I have a white one. A long time ago, I actually made a restoration video where I fixed these two iPhones by taking the displays from those two iCloud locked ones and putting it onto these. Both of these had pretty much destroyed displays. This one still worked, at least in terms of the display. The other one didn't work at all, but now both of these are fully functional. Well, they all are fully functional. However, these two have been restored. If you're interested in checking out that video, then I'll have it linked up right here. However, it was a long time ago and things have changed since then. Starting with the white 5C, it's seen better days in terms of the back housing. It is definitely a little scratched up but fortunately it's not cracked. All of the buttons on the actual housing and the mute switch, they aren't broken or anything like that, but it's not exactly in the best of shape. Fortunately though, the screen, this is from that iCloud 5C that I swapped onto this one, was in good condition and it's stayed in good condition with the screen protector that's also on it. Now this one isn't too fancy because, well, it's on iOS 10.3.3, but what's interesting about this one is that it's actually an eight gigabyte model. Now the 5C had options from 8, 16, and 32. However, 16 was typically the go-to size. So seeing an 8 gigabyte model is just really interesting considering that this is the last iPhone to have 8 gigabytes as an option. We've also got the first of the blue 5Cs and this one, it's in all right cosmetic condition. It's noticeably better compared to the white 5C here. However, you're not gonna have a mirror-like finish on any of these plastic devices anymore because at this point, well, this is more of the exception instead of what's normal. The display is also in good condition. This was also taken from another 5C that was iCloud locked, just like this one. This one is also pretty unique because it has a slide to unlock. So this is actually on iOS 8.3. So this has only had one major iOS update because the 5C was released alongside the 5S with iOS 7. This one is a 16 gigabyte model. This is more along the lines of what was common and 16 gigabytes was pretty much the standard at this time. But of course we have the classic iOS 8 look and design and we have the proper wallpaper. This just looks like how it should on a 5C. iOS 7 and iOS 8 are very similar design-wise. Last up, we've got another 5C. And if you're wondering why this looks terrible, this is actually from a screen protector that was put on years ago. And this is actually a matte screen protector. So it's not a glossy style finish. Probably not the best screen protector to use, but it's not the worst either. The back housing, it's also in pretty good condition, probably similar to the other blue 5C, definitely not as bad as the white one. This was the first 5C, or in general, the first upgrade from the 4S I was using. And this was the first phone that I started using alongside that one. And this was also the first introduction I had to the four inch display iPhones. And because I started using this one instead of something like a five or a 5S, that's why I really like the 5C still to this day. It might not be the best phone, but I still really like this. It's definitely one of my favorites alongside the 3GS and the 4S. But this one is not all that fancy either. It's a 16 gigabyte model and it's on iOS 10.3.3. But like I said, this one worked really well when I used it at the time. It's still a very cool one to have. Next up, we only have two 5S's. Now, I do actually have more 5S's, but unfortunately those are mainly only useful for parts or they don't work like they should, or they're both of those things. It's unfortunate, but these two do actually work. And yeah, I know that the screen protector doesn't exactly look nice, but it's what came on the phone. I'll be keeping this one on just to keep the screen protected because it's still at least in one piece. But what's cool about this 5C is that this actually has slide to unlock. This is a gold 5C, and although it's not in the best of shape, there is actually a dent here, and it's a little scratched up. It's in all right condition, and we have slide to unlock. This is actually on iOS 9.3.2, and it's a 16 gigabyte model. So not too fancy in the storage department, but this is still an iOS 9 5S, which is really cool. So this has only had two major iOS updates throughout its lifetime. This one though does have some sort of problem. I believe it's either a GPS or some sort of 
antenna issue. That's what I'm guessing based on the fact that this doesn't keep accurate time. Whenever the display is on, it will actually keep time as it should. However, the moment that it's actually left turned off, it'll just stay or default back to whatever time it was. But it does still work and it powers on, which is why I'm including it here. The other 5S here is a silver model. I do have space gray models as well, but like I said, those are primarily in parts or for repair, and this one is fully functional. This one is nice because it has 32 gigabytes of storage and it's on iOS 10.3.3. Now you can downgrade the 5S to 10.3.3 from iOS 12, so it's not too special in that regard, but it is still nice because it's currently on iOS 10. It's quite a snappy device on this older version of iOS. And of course we have the best-selling iPhone here, the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus. The iPhone 6 that I have here is a gold edition, and this one is in very good cosmetic condition. It doesn't have any scratches, it doesn't have any dents. I have a spare screen protector that I put on this just to protect the screen, but whenever I get more actual tempered glass screen protectors, I'll probably swap out to something like that. But in the meantime, this has been keeping this phone safe, and it's very nice to see a surprisingly 2014 era smartphone in brand new condition. Kind of crazy to believe how time flies, but that's how it is. The thinnest iPhone with a headphone jack. Now for an iPhone 6, this is pretty standard. It's only got 16 gigabytes of storage, and it's on iOS 12.5.1. Of course, we can't forget about the 6 Plus. Believe it or not, this has my SIM card in it. And you might be thinking, why are you still using a 2014 smartphone as your main device? Well, I really like the Plus form factor, and if I had a 6S Plus, a 7 Plus, or an 8 Plus, I would definitely use one of those. But considering I only have a functioning 6 Plus, now that doesn't mean that this is the only device I'm using. It's definitely showing its age in some aspects, however, for some things it still works really well. It may not be the best device to use nowadays, it still works really well for what I use it for, and of course, I've got all of these other devices, along with more that's coming up. Now the 6 Plus here is not in as perfect condition as the normal 6, but fortunately it's pretty close. There are some minor dings on the aluminum that are only really visible if you really try to notice it, but otherwise the aluminum doesn't have scratches or any sort of dents or anything like that, and the screen is also in very good cosmetic condition. It's not perfect, but given its age and the fact that it's still being used pretty regularly, it's not bad. And because this is, of course, a 6, you're probably expecting this to be on iOS 12. But no, it's actually on iOS 11.3. And of course, iOS 11 wasn't exactly the best thing to use on these older devices, but I'm still using it, and for what I've been using it for, it still works just fine. Is it fast? Well, when you compare it to something like the iPhone 10, you can definitely notice the difference. So, no, it's not exactly as fast as it would be if it was on iOS 8 or 9, or even 10. And this is also a 64 gigabyte model. If it was a 32 gigabyte model, I could probably get by with that. 16 gigabyte is probably stretching it. The plus form factor is definitely one of my favorites. And of course, after the 6 came the 6S. And you might be thinking, why is this 5S here? Well, this is actually an SE. And these two devices are probably one of my favorites as well. The A9 chipset is still really capable, and these devices just perform really well. Even though my 6 Plus is technically my main device, I use these a lot on a regular basis as well. Now, I've had this SE here for a very long time, and essentially, this was the upgrade after the 5C. So this, even though it wasn't technically my main phone, is the one that I use a lot and I still use it a lot and even though it's not on an older iOS version like iOS 9 or iOS 10 this one is actually on iOS 11 so I have stayed on iOS 11 for a long time and I'm still using it to this day this one is very similar to the 6 plus and it also being a 64 gigabyte model and this one is actually on 11.2.6 so seeing an SE which can be updated up to iOS 15 
probably not the most common thing to see it running iOS 11. Some things are not exactly up to date anymore, but for a lot of things, it still works really well. This one is also in very good condition. It's not exactly in 100% mint condition, but it's pretty close. If I had to compare it to one of the other iPhones, it's very similar to the 6 Plus. It has some very minor damage. This is really the only significant damage that it has, a small dent on this corner, but it's always been working and I've never had any problems with it. I love the form factor and the fact that this is just as fast as the 6S is really awesome to see. These are the newest iOS devices that I have. Not exactly up to date compared to what we have nowadays. This has actually been updated to iOS 14. This one is in very good cosmetic condition. This one's even better than the 6 Plus. I would say that this is very similar to the Gold 6 in terms of how good of condition it is. And really the only significant damage that this has is a small little scuff on that corner. However, every other part of this phone is in basically brand new condition. Like I said, this is on iOS 14, specifically 14.8.1, and I could update this to iOS 15. However, I have no plans on doing that. It's a 32 gigabyte model, and it's a decent amount of storage. I don't use this for a lot of different things. The main thing that I use this for is for applications that want a newer iOS version. If it wasn't for the 6 Plus being on iOS 11, I'd probably try and use that for most of my daily apps and whatnot, but it's also really convenient to have this on a newer iOS version because I don't want to update any of my iOS 11 devices. That has been a look at every single one of my functional devices with the exception of the 3GS which is unfortunate because it's in very good cosmetic condition, the 5S that doesn't exactly like to keep track of time, and I guess we can mention the 5 that is in questionable cosmetic condition but it still functions which is why I'm leaving it with this collection. Even though the 6S, the SE, and the 10 that I'm using to record this video aren't exactly the newest devices anymore, they still work well for what I'm using them for, and if I was limited to 6S technology, that still would be fine because these are still really good devices to use. The 10 has been extremely helpful, especially with the camera side of things, and in the future I'm sure that this will change and grow with time, and I would like to get a 7, a 7 Plus, an 8, an 8 Plus, etc., things like that they would be cool to add to the collection and even just some other colors of different models. With all of these iPhones out of the way, let's take a break and look at some iPods. iPods. Let's jump right in. I know I said I would split up the non-functioning with the functional ones, however many of these have had the same issue in the past, and besides, it looks cooler this way anyways, so we might as well do it like this and just talk about them one by one. With many of these iPod models, they've had battery problems in the past, and that's pretty typical for the iPod Nano. However, I say had because I distinctly remember this one having a black spot, and it doesn't have it anymore. There are no signs of battery swelling, which doesn't make any sense to me at all. However, I'm not complaining because that means these iPods have not self-destructed. So while it doesn't make any sense at all, and I distinctly remember that these iPod second generation models here have had battery swelling in the past and black spots, they don't have them anymore. And in fact, the most recent one that had it and then went away is actually this third generation model. I even made a YouTube community post about this, and well, as you can see, it's just not there anymore. To help us get started with the first iPod there, we've actually got Firewire on our side, and the other end of this cable is actually 30 pin. But once we got that plugged in, we can just take our iPod, which has no charge, and then immediately power it up. This one is a fourth generation, it's a monochrome screen, it's got 20 gigabytes on the internal hard drive. The battery surprisingly still works really well, and this is one of the iPods that I tend to use, and I have put many hours on this, and it still works just fine with that internal hard drive. The best part about this iPod? It's an HP. I certainly need more HP iPods and in general just some more classic iPods like this. This has been one of my favorites, I've been using it for a very long time. Plus at the same time this can use Firewire which instantly makes it even better because Firewire is amazing. So next up we have two iPod minis. Now I believe that this one is a first generation model because it has a copyright date of 2004 
and the other one has a copyright date of 2005. This one is also a 4 gigabyte model, and uh, I don't know why it's pink on the back. This one does work, and in fact, if we take our FireWire charger, because this one can also use FireWire, it'll turn on just like that. And there we have our iPod mini. So this one I don't really use that much, mainly because, well, it's in very good condition for its age, which is nice considering many of these probably have never been used with a case. It's not that I don't like the mini, I really do think that the mini is an interesting iPod, it's just that I haven't really used it in the past. I tend to use this one mainly because it has more storage. But the mini is still a really interesting iPod and it's nice to see them in their different colors. And now it's uh, iPod Nano time. I really do like the Nanos as an iPod. However, because of the batteries, I really can't use any of these unless I want them to explode. Many of these are in pretty good condition as well. They of course have some minor wear and tear. This one has some damage at this edge here. This one is in all right condition. None of these are destroyed or beat up. This one is definitely the coolest one because it's a product red edition, but they're still pretty cool iPods. I would definitely like to actually use them. The first pink one is a 4 gigabyte. The next one is also a 4 gigabyte. The third one, the silver one, is actually a 2 gigabyte model. And the product red one is also a 4 gigabyte. Naturally, after the second generation comes the third generation. It may not exactly be everyone's favorite, but it's just interesting and unique in a way. Both of these also have battery problems, especially this one. Like I said, it had the black spot, but now it doesn't. And this one is actually in relatively good condition. This one is definitely much more beat up. You can definitely tell that this one has seen a lot more use over time compared to this one. This is a four gigabyte model. The beat up one, which is also silver, is an eight gigabyte model. Now typically with the higher capacity ones, you'd probably go for a different color than silver. So if you wanted a silver iPod Nano third generation, that would be the one to go for. Oh yeah, and the best part about the third generation Nano, apart from the widescreen display, this can actually use FireWire, which is also really cool. It's the last generation of the Nanos to support FireWire, and of course, after the third generation comes the fourth generation. I've got three of these here, silver, black, and pink, and I really do like the design. I like the design of all of these iPods. The generation after this one, the fifth generation, which I don't have, is basically the same, except it has a bigger display and that famous iPod camera on the back. But these, of course, have a similar problem like the other iPod Nanos. This one had the black spot, but went away. This one actually has a display problem. It's very washed out. You can still see what's on it, but it doesn't exactly work well. And this one does actually work, but it's yet to have the black spot issue. And if I keep using this, I'm sure that something is bound to happen with time. So I'm not going to risk using this based on the fact that it's a Nano that has an old battery. The silver and the pink one are both 8 gigabyte models, but the black one is actually a 16 gigabyte model. I'll talk about the shuffles real quick, mainly because, well, they're iPod shuffles, and I mean, that's basically all you see on them. They, of course, have the clip, they have a typical iPod interface, and they don't have a display. Both of these do work, and on occasion I do use these. Two gigabytes is relatively limiting. There were a lot of these released, and there were actually 2015 revisions of the Shuffle and the Last Generation Nano that had additional colors. I really thought that I got every single iPod, but it turns out that I actually forgot to include one. So it's another Shuffle. Obviously we have these two. It's not a fourth generation, but in fact, a third generation. And what is there not to see? It's damaged in many different ways. It has scratches, it's dented. The stainless steel clip itself is bent in several ways and it will still open, but just barely. But believe it or not, this thing actually still works. If you plug it into a computer, it will power on and it does recognize itself as an iPod iTunes sees it just fine, but I really don't want to test this out in a real world scenario or anything like that because I have no idea of the state of the battery in this thing and I really don't want to test it out because I have no idea if it's going to explode or not like the Nanos and uh, yeah, so it's just here doing its thing, but it is still an iPod and I will say the design is actually pretty interesting. If it had some sort of interface like the fourth generation, I'm sure that it would have been a pretty cool iPod to have.
And now it's time for probably one of my favorite iPods, the sixth generation iPod Nano. And as you can see, I just have a couple of them. I even have one that is essentially brand new. Now it's not new, it has been opened, but this has everything inside and it still has the actual protective decorative piece on it. And it's still attached to the actual plastic piece, which is something you don't tend to see nowadays. So this one is opened, but it's complete in box and it's a very cool piece in the collection. And this one is actually in graphite, which is one of the colors that I really like on the specific model. I have actually powered this on to test that it works. And this is actually on version 1.0 of the iPod firmware. And of course we have four more of them here. And the, one of the first ever iPods that I got back a while ago was actually one of these, specifically this one. And as you can see, it seems to be scratched up, but that's actually a screen protector that I put on it forever ago. And well, it still works. Now it's not charged up at the moment, but this still has a very good battery in it and it gets a lot of usage as well. It is only an eight gigabyte model, but that's still a decent amount for something that is this small. You can even use these as a watch because of course you have that classic iPod interface with all the watch faces. Now the first blue one is a 16 gigabyte model and it's on the latest version, version 1.2. But the second blue model is actually also a 16 gigabyte model. This is actually on version 1.0 of the iPod software. I believe there actually are ways you can downgrade these to older versions such as this one. But because it has the 1.0 version of the software, you have all the extra icons that were removed later on from the lock screen. And in later versions, you can add them back. There is no music app like on the later versions. It's split up this way. Here's an example of the later added music app instead of it being split up like on that one. But this one is another silver version. It's completely stock. There's nothing on it. It's an eight gigabyte model and it's on version 1.2. This is how it is on defaults, but of course you can change this in the settings. On the home screen, you can do it in small icons and it appears just like the other one. These are one of my favorite iPod models just because of how weird and interesting they are. And the fact that a small device like this, which has a touch screen, still has a 30 pin connector, makes it actually really useful for older accessories. So you can actually just put this, say in a 2003 era iPod dock, it still works. With all of the standard iPods covered, all we have left are the iPod touches. To protect the iPods, let's do something completely original and put down an iPad. We've got two second gen models here, third gen, a fourth gen, and we've got another third gen here. And you'll see exactly why it's in this case very shortly. All of these do power on. Now their batteries aren't exactly perfect on many of them, but they do actually still hold a decent charge. So the first one here, the second generation model, it's still in okay condition and it's not bad to use, but it has the most amount of scratches on the front here and the back has seen a lot of usage over the years. Of course, we have that classic iOS 4 lock screen. This is an MC model iPod and it's on version 4.2.1. Not exactly the fastest device, but it gets the job done for an iPod. Next up, we've got another second generation model. This is also an eight gigabyte model. There's quite a bit of scratching down here at the bottom of the screen, but otherwise it's in relatively good condition. Some scratches up here as well, but apart from that, the rest of the display is basically brand new. The housing is also in relatively good shape. It's still relatively reflective. It's not perfect. It does have scratches. This one is also running iOS 4. This one is actually jailbroken. And if we go into settings here, this is on iOS 4.2.1 and it's another MC model iPod. And of course, next we have a third generation. The third generation is really nice because, well, it's the same form factor as the second generation, but it really does have a significant boost in performance when compared to this. And this is still a very responsive device. Now this one is jailbroken. It's running on iOS 5.1.1. And what's nice about this one is that it's actually a 32 gigabyte model. So extremely useful even today. And if you thought that the back was in good condition on the second generation, now I'm not saying it's perfect, but 
That's pretty good for a 2009 device. As you can see, it's reflective enough. And of course, the newest out of all of these iPods, this is a iPod Touch 4th generation. Of course, it has cameras. The back is very scratched up. This is probably the second worst condition one. And the only reason why it's better than the first iPod here is because the display isn't as scratched up as the other one. This one is jailbroken. It's running iOS 6.1.6. And this would be a really nice model to use, especially with the Retina high definition display, but it's only an eight gigabyte model. Still usable, but not as great as a 32 or even a 64 gigabyte iPod. Now, if you're wondering why I saved this one for last, well, let me get it out of the case and just take a look for yourself. Now the screen is basically in brand new condition. There's no scratching or cracks or anything like that. And it basically looks like a brand new iPod. The part of this iPod that really looks like it's brand new is the back. It's kind of crazy to see a 2009 era device looking as well as it is instead of it looking like every single other iPod that has been used. And that is exactly why I keep it in this case. It's soft enough to protect the stainless steel, and although that means I don't really use it that much because I want to keep it in basically brand new condition, it's still a very nice iPod to have. This is a 64 gigabyte model, and it's running iOS 5.1.1. Typically with iOS devices, or even just iPods in general, I tend to use the ones that have more use on them because, well, if something happens to it, it's already pretty scratched up. It's not like you're ruining a mint condition example. So I've been using this one a bit more. I've also been using this third generation one a lot, mainly because of its storage. Even though the back is in really good condition, I do also have a case for this one as well. But even as they are right now, they're still fun to use. And although these are only eight gigabyte models, they're still iPods and they can still be useful for something, especially when they're jailbroken. And with that, we saw all of the functioning iPhones, all of the iPods and all of the iPod touches. And all that remains is taking a look at every single one of the devices I have that are only good for parts, primarily because of iCloud or they're damaged and they don't actually function. I knew I had a good amount of part phones and just things that can't be used because of iCloud, but putting them all into one pile here really shows how much there actually is. So you can barely tell what's going on here, but let's go ahead and begin one by one. So first off, we have an iPod Touch 4th generation. Cosmetically, it's in pretty good condition. Unfortunately though, this one never powers on and it's either a battery problem or maybe just the motherboard itself doesn't work. Next up, we've got one in the back that you can't even see. This is an iPhone 6. It's on iOS 12, I believe. It has a bad battery. From what I remember, it doesn't really hold a charge. It is ever so slightly swollen, and it's been like that for probably a couple of years now at this point. But the problem with it, even though it doesn't have iCloud, is that it has a device management lock. So not entirely useful, even if it was repaired, but it's still in relatively good condition. And another one that you can't see in the back. This is an iPhone 3GS, which does actually work. It's damaged, obviously. There's a big crack on the display, but the screen does work. But the thing with this one is that it just needs a new battery and ideally a screen replacement. The reason why it's partially disassembled though is that I actually took the battery out of this one and put it in my basically mint condition 3GS, the one that we saw earlier, to essentially kind of resurrect it. Like I said, the charging circuitry in that phone didn't really work, and I have tried swapping it out with this dock connector, but that did not fix it. So this one basically just sits as is. Obviously no iCloud because this is a 3GS, but it does work and if I do get the components and potentially even a new housing because this one's really beat up, then this one would function once again. Next up, we've got an iPhone 5. Now this one does work. It's a 16 gigabyte model, but the problem with this one is that it has iCloud lock. There is no passcode on it, so I could technically use this, but the other problem with this one is that the charging port doesn't work either. So I can't even charge this if I wanted to. So as it is right now, it's only really useful for parts. 
Next, we've got an iPhone 5S, which until very recently was fully functional, even with the damage on the screen. And if you've seen my previous videos, then you'll know that this was actually a repair attempt in which I simply just tried to swap out the display. And the end result is a non-functional 5S where it doesn't want to charge. And the original display here is also cracked. The cool part about this one is that it is on iOS 9, but like I said, the repair attempt went completely wrong, and if you haven't seen that video, I'll have it linked up right here so you can check that out. Now the next device doesn't have a problem motherboard-wise, and cosmetically it's actually in really good condition. The main problem with this one though is that the battery itself doesn't work, and it's since been removed from this iPhone. The other problem is that the screen itself has been replaced in the past, and as you can see, it's not exactly a high quality replacement. It's detaching on this side here. I believe there was damage on the other side. You can clearly tell that it's not an official display, and it just doesn't look that great. So if I ever find an iCloud locked 6S or something like that, I could easily repair this with just swapping out the battery and the display, and this one would be up and running once again. And as we slowly get rid of more devices on top, you'll realize that there's a whole layer of iPhone 4s and 4s's on the bottom. But next up, we've got an iPhone 5. Cosmetically, it's in very good condition. The housing itself is in good condition. The battery, which has been removed, does work. But the problem is that this one is iCloud locked. It is on iOS 8 and there is no passcode. But again, it's iCloud locked. And I believe this was also a 16 gigabyte model. Next up, we've got an iPhone 5S. Now, the problem with this one is that it has been water damaged in the past, and I believe the motherboard doesn't work anymore, but whenever it did work, it was disabled, and this also has iCloud. The other problem is that, well, the display is also cracked. It does work, and it's not as bad as other displays, but it's still damaged, and this is also water damaged. After that, we've got an iPhone 5S and an iPhone 5C. Now, the unfortunate part about both of these is that this one doesn't power on anymore, and this one has iCloud as well as a passcode. So even though these are in excellent condition, I can't really use them. However, if I need them for parts or anything like that, or if I'm able to get the motherboard to work on this again, then I would actually be able to use this one because this 5S actually doesn't have iCloud. And we have another 3GS. This one does have a lot of cosmetic damage. In fact, it's missing the entire SIM tray here, and that piece of the headphone jack is actually broken. It does still work, but cosmetically, it's not exactly a mint condition example. The display itself is in good condition, but the reason why this is in the parts pile is because, well, there's no battery in here because the battery that was in it failed and actually expanded. The motherboard seems to be in okay condition, and I noticed it happening, so I was very quick to actually remove the battery. So I'm pretty sure the motherboard does still work. If I had the extra parts, then I could get this one up and running as well. We've also got another iPhone 6S. There's actually a problem with the motherboard in which it doesn't detect touch. I have tested it out with another display, and it hasn't worked. As for the battery, though, I don't entirely remember its condition, We've also got some more 5Cs. If these appear familiar, that's because these are the first ones that I got, at least in terms of recording for YouTube. These two 5Cs are iCloud locked, but fortunately, both of their batteries do work. And at the same time, I also have the 5C display that was replaced on the iOS 8 5C. This is the one that I had before. And as you can see, uh, I think you can tell why I swapped it out. And I've also got the other display that was on the other 5C, and despite its appearance, it does still work. Which is why I still have this display, because it's always useful for a test display. Next up, we've got an iPhone SE, and this one actually does work, but the reason why I put it in this pile is because it does unfortunately have iCloud. Now, this is actually usable. I believe it's on iOS 13, and it has 32 gigabytes of storage, and in fact, I actually used this as a camera for a while. It also has this interesting screen protector here, but the display also does work, and even though this is iCloud locked, it's still useful as a camera because the cameras on these A9 devices are relatively good, 
And like I said, I actually did use this for quite a while before I swapped over to the 10. And you can definitely clearly see all of the devices that are underneath, but we've also got some remaining ones on top here. Now this is another 5S, and this is also the other 5S that was featured in that attempted repair video where I was trying to swap out the display on that iOS 9 5S. This one also doesn't work. I'm pretty sure this one had motherboard issues, and this one has also had a lot of work done in the past because, well, I mean, that's the battery that it came with. And the display itself is also not officially Apple because I'm pretty sure they wouldn't leave a piece of plastic underneath the housing bracket. And even if this did work, it also has iCloud, so it's not much use anyways. The last device we have before this entire pile here is this iPhone 6 Plus. Now, I would use this because, like I said, I really do like this style of iPhone, the Plus models. But unfortunately, this one has iCloud, and even though it doesn't have a passcode, which means I could use this, fortunately, it's also in pretty good condition, which is nice to see. The display is not exactly in perfect condition, and I'm pretty sure that this also had some touch issues, which is relatively common on the 6. I'm actually going to start with this one because this is actually an iPhone 5. Now this unfortunately has iCloud. The battery also doesn't hold a charge and I'm pretty sure this is only a 16 gigabyte model and it's on iOS 10. It's in relatively good condition. It's seen some usage but it's not terrible. And if it wasn't for the iCloud, I definitely would put a new battery in this. And now we're down to the last nine devices. So starting from the left here, we have an iPhone 4S. And by the way, all of these, unless I mentioned it earlier, have iCloud. So even if I try to restore them, I can't really do anything with them because they have iCloud. This is an iPhone 4S on iOS 9.3.6, and it's at the setup screen. This is actually an iPhone 4 CDMA model, which means it doesn't have the SIM tray and it's on iOS 7.1.2, again at the setup screen. The next one is an iPhone 4S, which actually doesn't have a passcode, and it's on iOS 9.2. It's a 16 gigabyte model. The next 4S here used to have a battery, but I remember I took it out to put it in another iPhone 4S, or at least test another iPhone 4S. It's at the setup screen. This next one here is another iPhone 4S. However, I don't know what iOS version it's on. I'm pretty sure it was on iOS at least seven or eight, if not nine, but it also has a passcode, so I can't really do anything with that. And then we have another iPhone 4. It is quite beat up, and this actually had an expanding battery, which I have since removed. It has no passcode, and it's on iOS seven. There's no real point in putting a replacement battery, so, like the rest of these devices, it's primarily for parts. And then the last three devices here, they are all iPhone 4S's. I'm not entirely sure which versions of iOS these two are on. This one is actually on iOS 8 and has no passcode, but these two actually have a passcode and I'm pretty sure they're on at least iOS 7, if not 8 or even 9. And again, because of iCloud, there's really no point in fixing these up. They're only useful for the parts they have. Now the back on this one is actually in pretty good condition. There's a couple little scratches, but much better than the front. And this one is in all right condition. Again, relatively scratched up. And even though all of these are locked, they're still useful in fixing up devices that actually can be used. Instead of getting it separately, I can always just disassemble one of these and take the parts from it. I know that was a lot of devices, but hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video where we looked at every single one of the devices that I have, seeing which ones worked, which ones don't. I know that this was probably a really long video, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And if you want to see more stuff like this, then let me know. We still have iPads and Apple boxes and accessories to see. So if you want to see more of this type of content, then leave a comment down below or leave a thumbs up on today's video. And hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing every single one one of my iOS devices that both work, that don't work, that are only useful for parts, and probably the coolest part of this entire collection is just the official iPhone microfiber cloth where we can use it to safely place our iPhone 2G anywhere without it getting scratched. But that's going to be it for now, and as always, thank you very much for watching.